Hi there, I'm Barbara Turley and you're watching another episode of Feminine Wealth TV, the show that uncovers the diamond tips on creating truly conscious wealth from change makers, world shakers and wealth creators. Are you sick of hearing that in your first two years of business it's really hard to make money? Are you sick of watching other people's product launches go absolutely fabulous and wondering, is that just an urban myth? I know I have, but on today on the show, I have an amazing girl who has done three quarters of a million dollars in her first two years in business, with 250,000 of that in the first month of this year. So she is on an amazing trajectory. So welcome to the show, Amanda Jane Daly. Thank you. It's very exciting to be here. Very exciting to have you on the show with your amazing um, experience with business over the last couple of years. I'm excited to dive right in and see how the hell did you get to this <laughs> amazing level. Thank you. It's actually really interesting to hear you reflecting it back in that way because... It must be. Is it a bit yeah. surreal thinking, is that me she's talking about? It actually is. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think um, yeah. just straight away when you say the story of the first few years, it certainly, I think the beginning didn't feel like it was easy. So it's quite fun yeah. to sit here now and go, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. tell me the beginning. So I know, and I always say to people, you know, it doesn't matter how successful you are or how fast it came, but the beginning, it's never linear. It's never a linear path. Yeah. So take me back. Were you always an entrepreneur or were you working for someone else? Or what's your history with this whole business thing? Sure. I actually worked in digital advertising and yeah. um, mainstream advertising as well for about 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. So that was my path to start with and very much loved what I did creatively. I actually always loved that technology, mix of online, business, creativity, but really was finding myself burnt out, not enjoying the, the corporate environment anymore. Mm -hmm. And... To a stage, I just kind of couldn't be in there anymore. <laughs> I think, I, you know, I know I suffered that, and a lot of people watching will experience that as well, so yeah, that's yeah. very common for them, yeah. <laughs> and really, as part of that path, I was just searching for, I thought there was something wrong with me, so I was yeah. trying to fix my health, or fix my mindset, or what's wrong with me, why can't I keep up like everybody else? And I guess one thing led to another, I kind of um, stumbled across a health coaching course, and went, Oh my gosh, like, <laughs> that's for me. Oh you know, I felt like that's what I've been training for all these years on the side. Um, and yeah, eventually I left my job in advertising. I was supposed to be looking for another one mm. and just found myself really just obsessed with setting up a blog, starting to tell people all about health. And so was health yeah. always your, you had a passion in this area or like always? I actually did. I remember at high school wanting to be a naturopath and not wanting to do a science degree, which was kind of mm. laid out in front of me of what you had to do. I was like, oh no, I'll go to art school. <laughs> yeah. The creative side of you yeah, coming yeah. out, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I did always have a, an interest in health and I think in conjunction with just always trying to get on top of my own health that was something I've kind of always struggled with right okay um, and was always looking for like the new you know thing that I could do so mm -hmm. or eat or so it was very exciting when it came through as a possible career path without having to completely retrain yeah so you went yeah. and did the health coaching course yes yes yeah. and then you became a health coach Yes, right. Yeah. So that was the beginnings of this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was, and when you just say just now about you know the beginning, it's like oh yeah, so much has changed. Like it certainly <laughs> was not easy in those first few days where you've had this or weeks or months, and you've yeah. had a career as one thing, and all of a sudden like oh, I was almost like deep breath. Like you're sitting there like. I have no idea what I'm doing. Or what have I done? What have yeah, I what done? Yeah, what have I done is the big one. Yeah, yeah and I think there's um, almost a perception. There weren't many people doing this at that time, but even then I had this perception, well, you know, I've got this qualification as a health coach. I'll just go out and get clients, and that certainly was not the case. <laughs> yeah, because the health coaching thing, it's still a reasonably new concept. For, I mean, yeah. people are getting more interested in their health, but it's yeah, not yeah. like you just go out and everyone just is in demand for your services. Yeah, it's also no. quite broad. Like, what is a health coach? You know? Oh, absolutely. One of the main things I say, because I do now work yeah. as a business mentor for health coaches, and that's what I always say, no one Googles a health coach. No. Like, there's a lot more you've got to learn to communicate. Totally. Yeah. yeah, so those early days. So you did you, yeah. you did the course. Did you actually start out as a health coach then and start that path? Yeah, yeah, so I started out as a health coach. I feel like I probably, in hindsight, wasted a lot of time thinking that if I made the perfect blog and you know, made the perfect logo, that was kind of my background, that that would get me clients, and it didn't. Yeah. And I literally just remember there was times just lying on the couch staring at the ceiling, like I would do anything to get wow. this work out into the world, but I had no idea how. And to be honest, no one would even tell me how. I knew people even in the industry, and it felt like it was this closed secret. 
Yeah. And I think a lot right. of people will, I think there will be a lot of people resonating with that statement right now because okay, it's like, there's yeah. all these people who are successful. Yeah. And yet it's like this kind of world of, I can't get in. How do I, how do I crack the code on that? Yeah. Totally. On that That's whole how thing. I felt. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, what can I do? What's wrong with me? Yeah. I can't get this. Oh, totally. Yeah. And yeah. it feels like you see other people getting clients and making money. Mm. And it's like, I do anything. I'm just missing something. Like, mm. what's missing? And so really I started to do two things. One, I just naturally, I guess, started thinking, hold on a minute. I used to work for the, you know, likes of Coca-Cola and Microsoft and eBay, and I could market them, like, you mm. know, winning international awards for them. Why can't I market myself? And it really, I mean, two things. One, I started to understand, like, okay, you know. It's different when it comes to yourself. Confidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, essentially so you're selling yourself as a coach, yes. not a product or not someone else's. Um, but equally some of those marketing skills that actually were so obvious and natural to me, then all of a sudden I just started dabbling with those and actually putting myself out there mm. and the smallest of things got me a lot of tension, like PR, mm. clients, you know, yeah. affiliates, all these things started flowing and so I was like, uh -huh, okay, this isn't a different world. It's almost like that you, I mean, often we do this when we try a new career. We go out and we do something totally different and we forget the things that we were doing before. Totally. And all our expertise yeah. goes out the window because we're in this new thing. Yeah. And then yeah. we sort of think, well, hold on a second, I've, I was successful before, I, I, surely I can get this right. And you start to think, well, what have I already learned and the skills I already have? Totally. That I can really bring to the table here. And such a confidence. That. When you yeah. just say that, such a confidence thing I think a lot of people mm. go through. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. I've been kind of like, paid good money and mm. in senior positions that they've worked up to and all of a sudden they felt like they're at the bottom of some rung like they've got to start again and yeah. the confidence without that was a real key mindset shift for me I'm not a beginner yeah you're, you you might know? be a startup and you might have just started a new business but you're not necessarily a beginner yeah, yeah. that's that's you're a beginner health coach but you weren't a business a beginner business person a, totally. a marketing person at that stage totally yeah so you and I kept health coaching um mm. You know, it certainly wasn't easy. There certainly wasn't a lot of money in the early days. But slowly but surely, I started really understanding also the difference in marketing and getting clients. Because mm. if you don't get clients, you can have the, again, the nicest blog with the nicest website. Yeah, yeah. No money. <laughs> but no like money. Which money is the lifeblood of any business. Yeah, yeah, starting to become a bit of an issue by this stage. So um, really, um, really grasped how to get clients, how to yeah. start making money as a health coach, and start getting my consistent kind of four or five clients a month mm -hmm. and... You know, making around the 5K up to kind of 7K a month, which started kind to be really the holy, good. It's the holy grail when you start out that, because that's your yeah. sort of base level income that you really want to get to. Totally. I, I still yeah. maintain that the first 5K a month is the hardest. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After that, everything's easy. A million dollars a month. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe not. But. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. but I know what you mean. That, that's the hardest, because you're trying to find the thing that will work. Absolutely. in that first 5k actually because yeah. prior to that you're not really the messaging isn't working or you're not connecting or something's not going right totally and there's actually yeah. so much to learn that I don't think people mm. understand and I certainly didn't mm. even though I had some of these past skills I mean you've got to know your target market you've got to know where to find them yes. you've got to know how to talk to them what offer they want how to charge uh, yeah, the <laughs> hardest know, one. yeah all these things take time and you know, one of the things I've seen most from mentoring people one on one is like these grandiose goals in the first six months. Yeah. And then they realize, like, oh, there's so much to learn in the initial there's a lot days. To learn. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot of trial and error, there's a Definitely. lot of testing, especially yeah. when you don't know. I mean, I know I found this in my own business. We talked off air about this. I mean, you know, it, it, you might think there's a problem out there, but if mm -hmm. your customer, your ideal client, doesn't see it as a problem, Yes. then you're not going to hit the mark. Even though, though you know it's a problem for them, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you still won't really sell anything. So that's the bit I have found the hardest in my first year, was, is that, trying to get that right. Absolutely. The reason I'm laughing is this is particularly common with health coaches or people yeah. in the wellness world, because I tend to find that they quickly go through a detox, weight loss, whatever it is, and they discover this whole other world of mm. personal development and relaxation. And, yeah. and so then they try and pull together packages that are more kind of soft and flowy because it's about the bigger picture, you know, like that kind of talk. Yeah, yeah. No results. <laughs> no results. No results, yeah. And the people that they're selling it to aren't there yet and they don't uh, holistic life coaching what? It doesn't resonate. It just doesn't, doesn't resonate. Wash straight over. Yeah. yeah, and for every health coach, it's like, I don't want to teach weight loss. 
Um, you yeah. know, a lot of our clients, maybe not weight loss, but something as tangible as that sells. Yeah, and, and it so almost these... feels a bit, yeah, I can imagine because there's so many, um, you know, the weight loss gurus online and all that who are yeah. selling like all these products and stuff. So they probably don't want to be associating with that sort of level. But yeah, that's what the result that people want, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. tell me then, so how did you, where did the health coaching stop and the mentoring to health coaches and the business coaching start? What was that sort yeah. of transition? It's actually funny as I'm saying that out loud because I was doing that with business. I was like, I don't want to teach business. I don't want to teach marketing. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, a lot of that was me still judging, you know, the world that I'd been in, the advertising world, mm. burnout, bad, like this kind Corporate, of thing. Corporate, yeah, we love us do that. Yeah. yeah, and I just found that all my clients who were coming to me as health coaches by this stage, or not all of them, but say 50% of them were actually health coaches, mm. up-and-coming health coaches who were maybe studying. Because often I think health and wellness people get into this for their own health, just they like do, I did. Yeah. And they were coming to me to improve their health, mm. but they were ending up asking me questions like, so what do I do on my blog? What do I do on my website? And just more and more people, even friends in the entrepreneurial world, etc., yeah. are like, you really should teach business. Like, this is, you know it. And it's I was funny like, that no, no. When, when something, you know, I've had this shift in my business as well. When, mm. when people start coming to you and asking you for something, right, mm. that you know you can, that is a sellable something. Yeah. And you don't even have to go out and try to get business for this. I mean, that's telling you something. Like, yeah, yeah. The market there, it's like screaming at you. People want this thing, and you're trying to sell them. You're trying to sell them apples when they actually want oranges. Yeah. 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 But it wasn't an easy transition because mm. I really was so like, I just want to help people with their health and well-being and really for me that was more about like mm. stepping into your truth and your purpose and just living like the life you're meant to live and it took me quite a transition like within yeah. me to realize that actually I can do that in business coaching absolutely but yeah. that you, yeah you can help people in so many other ways you know um, yeah. all, all these health coaches that you now help and that you mentor I mean they're just yeah. so great I've seen all the testimonials on your site it's amazing the work that you've done with them you know so you are giving yeah. them their passion and their, you know, their truth and all that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's like, um, once I got that, yeah. that was the shift where I was like, okay, I'm going to offer this now. And did you go, I mean, was the website, uh, amandadaily.com and then all of a sudden it was, uh, Amanda Daily, the business code. Did you just kind of shift the website or was, how, um, how, did, you, how did, like, did you wake up one day and it was just like, okay, today I'm a business coach. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Like for that, you know, there was about a, I don't know, five, six month period where it was starting to cross over. Mm -hmm. I uh, traded and my website is still actually there, fuelurbanwellness.com, which is the health coaching oh, site. Right. Yes, yeah. And I never changed that. And this, even though I'm business marketing and wealth coach, mm -hmm. I really think you can hear my own journey. Like all that time on blogs and websites, it's lovely once you're at a certain level, but it doesn't get you clients in the early days. No. So when I moved from health coaching into business coaching, mm -hmm. I did not have a business coaching site for about six months yeah, and okay. I literally at one stage put up like a single landing page mm. and that was it so the health coaching one sat there and kind of sits there to this day yeah. I just stopped paying attention to it to be honest yeah. um and then yeah eventually I did set up then my own website as well yeah and what I love about yeah. that actually I just I love that so many times when we start a business we go out and we, we get the fancy website and we spend a fortune on, you know, beautiful offices or like nice yeah. furniture or yeah. something when really, you know, my, I, I always tell stories about my dad. My dad's given me so many business tips over the years. And one thing I remember him saying is like, all it comes down to is sending invoices. He goes, who are you invoicing today? Mm. And it was the whole point of, you know, just go ahead and get the business first. Yeah. And then do yeah. all the logos and all that stuff. Like logos really are not going to, they're not what's going to assign you business. Absolutely. Mm. And I'm the first person, like, as an ex-art yeah. director, like, I want everything to look beautiful. Yeah, it's imagine. very important for my site to look nice, you know, mm. those kind of things. But the reality when I started making a lot more money mm. is that was not important at all. And I think it mm. is lovely, and I'm loving going back to it now and starting my blog again. Mm. But that really is, um, like, the creative piece of the business for me, as well as nurturing, like, the people who are now in my tribe, etc. Yeah. I love giving back in that way. Mm. But it's actually not what was making money and in my you know yes. translation of that that means I wasn't helping people if I wasn't making money so I love that I want yeah. to I want to pause on that point because you just said what did you just say I wasn't helping people if I wasn't making money yeah hardly anybody will say that they'll all think I must give first 
yeah and then the money will come later and I'm like no that is not yeah. how, really how it works like the more money you make the more you can serve the more people that you can actually help Absolutely. so it is, it is a mental shift there so I'm really yeah. glad that you made that point yeah know? and that also I think as you say this whole thing of you've got to get out and actually do some sales first Absolutely. And then you can nurture the tribe and all that later, which I think yeah. a lot of the marketing world at the moment is talking about go out and build your tribe and get a huge social media following and then try to sell something with the internet. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, both ways work, but I, I, I think I prefer your way of, of yeah. really then you get to the seed of the problem that your client really has. Yeah, it's interesting when you say it like that because I don't feel like I, I wasn't nurturing and giving. I was doing yeah. it in a different way. So I was yeah. doing last year especially a lot of free we uh, webinars, free training yeah, right, series. Okay. Mm. So a lot of my um, heart, energy, attention was going into these more one-on-one uh, -on -one personal video experiences with people. Mm. And yes, I would upsell at the end. Mm. Um, but at the same way, like to me, I could give so much more on a webinar like that than I could in like a weekly blog post. Or It was actually a sure. choice of my energy mm. last year, to be honest. Yeah. So yeah, I just couldn't do it all. That's the other thing. So you were saying that you did quite a lot of webinars. So webinars, obviously, this is the latest thing. Well, not the latest thing, but people are having a lot of success with webinars. Yeah. Did you start that straight away? Or, you know, when you started the business coaching, did you say, right, I'm going to do webinars, and that was... I didn't start it straight away. Yeah. I definitely, to start with, was relying on, like, email marketing. Mm -hmm. um, still a little bit of blogging, but that was dropping off quite quickly at yeah, that stage. Yeah, busy. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, I'm a bit of an online marketing geek. Like, I just love things like that. There's yeah. a reason I had a career, you know, in, the, yeah, in that but, space. Yeah. You know, there was part of my journey as well that we didn't talk about. Once I really got into understanding, like, this is a marketing game at the end of the day, yes. I did start learning off a lot of, like, top international online business yeah. marketing coaches and often people who were quite masculine in nature, etc. Yeah. And I just had a, like, I guess, knack of how to bring that back into you know, the more heart centered world, into the health coaching world etc yeah um, and that's what I started to have fun with like oh, there's these like geeky concepts that can, that, be, that can be used yeah. in like a really awesome way a creative way yeah yeah, right, yeah. Okay, yeah so I love that side of it so yeah I started um, understanding how to do Facebook ads mm -hmm. um, and webinars webinars in particular for me were huge really quite life-changing yeah I mean yeah. I as far as a business perspective yeah I was terrified to do my first video um, mm -hmm. you know anything like that on my blog but with webinars, what I found mm. is that people, the know, like, and trust factor was mm -hmm. so much stronger. With a live webinar With well. a live webinar where they would yeah. hang out with me, you know, for an hour or so, get to know me. Yeah. And what I quickly discovered is people were buying, you know, whether it was two, three, four, five thousand dollars or more packages off me straight off the bat, having met me one time. On the webinar. On a webinar. Right, okay. Or not necessarily on the webinar, but mm -hmm. that was the first point and then Obviously, I knew how to market in the following weeks to follow up on that as well. Yeah, right, okay. So yeah. some would come straight from it, but definitely people would say, I saw you for the first time last week on a webinar, and here yeah. I am ready to sign up, which really... Um, that's quite amazing. was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. So we should yeah. all be doing webinars. Actually, I do a few <laughs> webinars as well. I'm starting to do more webinars this year. Yeah. yeah. I and think you have yeah. to to get across your personality. There's so many different coaches online. There's so many different... You know, it's yeah. easy to fall into that, but someone else is doing it. Mm. Like, where am I to find my place? But when people get to know you as a person, mm. there's no two, pe you know, no two people alike. And if the right client has similar, like, values, beliefs... Desires as you and they're just you, drawn to you yeah they'll just be drawn to you and on video you can like after you get over the initial like you know <laughs> yeah, initial it just comes yeah. you, you just end up kind of getting in flow being yourself speaking your truth and the right people will be drawn to that yeah, yeah, yeah. it seems to be that much uh, more effective and what about what are your views on so there's the Facebook ad comes into the webinar mm -hmm. so you advertise it on Facebook comes into the webinar mm -hmm. but what are your views on getting the marketing copyright on the webinar page and the name of the webinar and that sort of thing yeah because it's not just like whack a webinar up and hey, you're going to be selling $5,000 products. No, I know that doesn't happen. So what's yeah. the trick with the webinar thing in your view? The trick with any mm. marketing yeah. and really any copywriting is knowing your target market. Yeah. And you've got to know who you're talking to. You've got to really do the work to understand. I always say like care about your audience kind of more than they do. Yes. You've got to go out and know what are they looking for? What are their buzzwords? What would they buy? I often say to health coaches like, what would your audience go into the pharmacy? 
and pick up off the shelf. Get that granular with your yeah. target client of what they actually do every day. And yeah, because yeah. people do buy. Like everyone's mm. like, oh, people won't buy coaching or health coaching. People buy every day. They spend money on alcohol, iPads. Like there's mm. no lack of money and no lack of spending. It's just that they don't understand the offer or they don't understand why they would buy. It's not resonating with them. Yeah. yeah. So it actually has to come back to that point of understanding your market, mm. understanding your offer and how to package that up as a program mm -hmm. and then really from there it's the wording etc that you've learned in that process that will come out on your marketing first on your facebook ads mm -hmm. enough to you know intrigue them, in, them intrigue to sign up for a webinar enough yeah. to click and you know it needs to be something that will stand out amongst the zillion you know oh, facebook webinars, feeds and facebook and facebook webinars. Feeds, yeah. yeah and when they get to that landing page in particular what mm. is it that they read when they're there that they're like I'm That's putting my me. name in. Yeah, yeah, this is me. I'm in. Mm. Um, and even more so then to get them to turn up live. There's yeah, that, course, that extra yeah. step again. Yeah. Because uh, people do so like So there's to a watch bit of science to this, isn't it? There is there there's is, a little yeah. bit of flow to this because yeah. I think um, one thing I was thinking as you were talking, it's probably also a good idea to just get a webinar up there and see what happens because if people don't yeah. sign up or don't show up or whatever, then yeah. you need to tweak it, you need to fix it, this, you know, and just do another one. Yeah. Try a different messaging. Do another one. That's what I reckon people should do. What Absolutely. Do <laughs> like, there's no quick fix. What no. I often see is someone do something like try one webinar, and that didn't work. And never do another one. And never do another one again. And then they'll go buy the next online course, and this one will be on Facebook ads. And then they'll do a Facebook ad, oh, that didn't work. Yeah. And so then they'll go off and they'll learn a blogging course, and oh, well, that didn't get me clients. And instead of like sticking with one thing, and following through. Following and, through, but yeah. actually trying again and actually going back and thinking, well, if my audience didn't respond to this, why not? What could I try differently? Yeah, and it's that thing of saying, you know, I think a lot of people, they, they try something that fails and they think, I failed. Yes. Actually, you just didn't, your audience, it's not exactly what they wanted. So if you keep trying and keep, as you say, keep the audience in your mind yeah. and not you in your mind, then actually you can probably, and the minute you hit on that thing, yeah. the floodgates can open. Absolutely. Which is kind of what happened for you because, you know, if you're doing six and seven hundred thousand dollars in a couple of years, I mean, that's you hit on the thing that people want and the floodgates opened. Yeah. Totally. How long was it before you hit on the thing, do you think? Um, when was it? What, what was the moment where it just it just took off for you? Um, <laughs> there's waves. Yeah. No, no, it's kind of like yeah. it happens once, and the next one's bigger, and the next one's bigger. Yeah, but that's the yeah. Yeah, there was a decision point in me, um, like I said, where I hadn't wanted to put out the business coaching mm. as an offer, and I feel like that was the first time I officially put that out as an email, mm -hmm. and I've never had so many responses. I was like. Okay, wow. yeah. but then having said that, I feel like I went through another wave when I really grasped the webinars mm -hmm. and really. But again, when I look at the journey of that, I really also by that stage knew what people wanted. I also knew That's what they were key, coming to me for, and I knew how to speak their language. Mm. Um, and obviously, having gone through that path myself mm. of really knowing what it's like to struggle as a health coach, I do. It wasn't easy. That actually beginning. is, yeah. That I think that's for you. That's key. Yeah. yeah if you can actually, you you were in the you're in the mind of your of your ideal client even before yeah. you came to do this, so you already know what they're feeling. And authentically being able to sit there and say. Not only was it this hard, but actually I overcame it. Yeah. So I could I show that it is possible yeah. um, to do so. So that's amazing. Um, you know, and one thing I'm interested now to talk about is the future. So the future vision for where you're going. Because obviously now what you've done is you've created this amazing business already. Mm -hmm. But it's, got, it's an income stream, really. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to take it to the next level and really create a, a company out of this or a proper business that, that is scalable, I guess? Where's, where's, where's yeah. it going from here? I'm so glad you say that. I think it's so easy for people not to think and I certainly didn't like yeah. think that next step yeah so we've already taken I guess step one of moving this to a business which was moving from the one-on-one -on -one coaching only which I did mostly last year into creating a bigger group program or a group mastermind program right okay cope with more people it's like yeah. you only do so much one-on-one -on -one, of course so Absolutely. the group thing is the next level yeah I would never recommend jumping to that too quickly I think there's something about working with that many one-on-one -on -one people that really helps you understand what people are already going through Absolutely. again talk about knowing your target market when you've coached that many people yeah. inside and out and you get to know yourself as a coach too like what your strengths yeah. are and what you love working on yeah. so moving to a group program um, um, was the first step, I guess, because I started feeling like there's so many more people need this work. 
And I only have so many hours in a day or in a week. Absolutely, yeah. So it made so much more sense, as well as I really got to understand the power of teaching in groups and mm -hmm. everyone seeing what everyone else is doing and, oh, this is possible for me too, that mm. side of things. Yeah. So that's stage one. Mm -hmm. And um, really from there, it's now starting to look at, well, how do I then do that? Um, so it's really evergreen, you know, yeah. so that... Um, I now know what business, at least this iteration of it, you know, what works, what people are buying. I've got that messaging down. I understand mm -hmm. the pain points. That takes a while. But once you've got that, yeah. the next stage is how do you now make that almost work for you? So that, are you working for that all the time? Yeah, yeah, because it is. You're still, as a coach, until you get to this level, you're still in there serving people one-on-one -on -one, or even in a group. You're still, it's still you doing hands-on mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's the next stage for me of kind of um, automating, systematizing, yeah. getting everything pretty much working um, automatically yeah. by itself. Yeah, and flow, which is lovely. Yeah, there's so many other ideas that I want to um, put forward that I know can really help people in the health and wellness professions. Yeah. Yeah. And there really is only so many hours in a day and, you know, so many ways to do that. Yeah. And you have to take it yeah. in stages too. I mean, I often say to business owners, you know, a lot of us, and myself included, suffer yeah. from having tons of ideas yeah. and not enough time to execute the ideas and then yeah. what happens is you're just scattered and overwhelmed and all over the place absolutely and I always kind of say you know there's nothing wrong with what you just said of stage one is this mm -hmm. I need to bed this down and get it right yeah and then stage two and then stage three and if that yeah. takes five years that's totally fine because that's it's like a baby being born you know and a child yeah. grows up and you have to let it evolve in the stages that it's going to go through so absolutely yeah. and part of that process for me is actually refining like you say the one yes. offering that I've really got you know mm -hmm. there's no lack of ideas there's no lack of other ways I could be making money right now if I wanted mm -hmm. it's really important for me to have a really high quality product yeah. that my clients are really getting results from there's so many options you know on the market that people can learn from mm -hmm. but really nothing at least that I know of for health wellness professionals to really get clients and really in the early money. stages in the which early is the thing, stages that, that first step of getting sales getting yeah. clients and making money so that you can serve more people absolutely which is really what you're doing yeah yeah so a lot of my time also this year is going into refining that like yeah. you know making those um, course outlines and everything just so so that everyone really can learn that's really yeah. on the mark and you know, yeah, you could go off and do the next big thing, sure, but it's really mm. important for me, like, you know, that's why I'm doing it. That's the yeah. purpose piece, if you like. Mm. Get that as slick as it can, but then automate it at the same time. Yeah. Um, I love yeah. that, because yeah. I'm listening to you going, oh my God, you're like the star student, because it's really, <laughs> yeah, do one thing and yeah. do it really, really well, yeah. and then do the next thing. That's that's the trick in any in yeah. any business, and it's how you don't you don't end up scattered. And it's the trick with anything, to be honest. Really, just focus on it, refine it, yeah. and then systemize it and get it off your plate, kind of thing. And then you can do the next thing. Yeah, and the other thing for me as well is you know I was in the corporate world of advertising, as we talked about, yeah. and I became a health coach to have more of a lifestyle. Um, yeah. Obviously, because I wanted to share my um, what I'd learned with people and serve mm -hmm. people, but it was also for me. I wanted a a more freedom-based lifestyle. I wanted more time. I wanted to be able to do things on my own terms and, you know, work with clients when I wanted, go on holidays, all that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think as business gets bigger, it's, for me anyway, really important to still manage that. And Absolutely. still, yeah, yeah. you know, I see a lot of people in the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial world, you know, and it can get bigger than your corporate job as far as hours that are involved and all that okay. kind of thing. You know what, though? Yeah. I think that's a lack of that like ensuring that your foundation is set up properly yeah and people I and mean, what i see with clients who are in that situation for example is that mm -hmm. often i see two types of clients really there's the ones that just have they're 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 one-to-one -one so much that they have no time or space or energy left to even think about how they would go to the next level yeah they're making yeah. nice money but that's okay that's a problem but the other ones are the ones who grew too quickly mm -hmm. and tried to do all the stages and they end up completely because right. none of the stages or foundation is, pro yeah. is properly set up yeah, to cope yeah. with the next stage. And then they end up yeah. running, chasing their tail a lot like that. Yeah, it's so easy, freedom should exist at the next levels, you know. Yeah. You yeah. should get more and more freedom the higher up the levels <laughs> that you go you know, in some ways, you know, if you're doing it right, I think. Yeah, yeah. totally. And I'm just thinking, you know, we always see what other people are doing and there's a perception mm. we have to do it all now, but... 
I think that's been one of my yes. biggest lessons in the last little while. To yeah. I suffer from that one as well. Yeah. I'm always thinking <laughs> on comparisonitis and you think, oh, I should be doing it faster. Yeah, it's yeah. only so fast you can build something. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It is the truth. Yeah. 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 So that's brilliant. I mean, you've been amazing to have on the show. And if people mm-hmm. want to connect with you and they want to find out more about what you do and your courses, where should they go? Sure. So yeah. my website is amandajanedaily.com. Great. And Upswing Mastermind is my signature mastermind course. Love the name of that. Upswing. When it's time to upswing your business, your health coaching business. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your first amazing two years in business with us. It's really insightful. Really, really My absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay. And thank you again for watching for another week. And remember, you can catch me later this week on my podcast, Wealth Unplugged, where I'm going to be giving you my key takeouts from my chat today with Amanda. And I can guarantee you I have more than three. So be sure to catch me there. Until next week, see you then.